Good morning. This is Maximizing Productivity for Your Autodesk Users. My name is Pam Poulter from Synergist. I'd like to introduce Danielle Grindle. Danielle is the Channel Sales Manager for CAD Learning Products at 4D Technologies, working with partners like Synergist to enhance their training offerings through on-demand learning. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to Danielle. Thank you, Pam, and thank you all for joining us today. Today, I'd, I'd like to um, go through a quick presentation, um, PowerPoint presentation regarding closing the skills gaps in your organization and what we'll touch on. And um, then we'll go right into the product presentation. So I have a short, short agenda. Um, we're going to talk about closing the skills and knowledge gaps in your organization and how CAD Learning can help with that. Um, we're going to, during the presentation, look at the content that we offer and how you can include your own learning content from your organization to create your own learning delivery program for your employees. We'll touch on our assessments and how they can help you bridge that skills gap that you may have today um, and identify where, where the skills are needed. We'll take a look at our reporting capabilities. And then we'll look at the CAD Learning plugin, which is an in-application support tool for your Autodesk users. I'd like to ask that if you could submit your questions as we go through the presentation and if they can be answered right away. Uh, Pam will take care of it on her side through the chat bar. Uh, alternatively, if, if it's something we need to address later on in the presentation, I'll take them at the end um, and make sure we get you those answers. So closing the skills gaps. I, I'd like to reference a report done by Deloitte. Um, this is a press release they put out on, on a uh, report they did on skills gap shortage. And today, we are facing a 2 million worker shortage um, over the next decade. And studies are indicating that 9 in 10 Americans believe manufacturing essential to the U.S. economy. Um, only at, 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 one in three parents are encouraging their children to pursue careers in manufacturing. Um, so if, if you look at the first quote on the screen and think about that, our my generation is reaching the age of retirement, and it's leaving a huge hole in, in the workforce, particularly in engineering. And along with the advances in technology that require much higher skill levels, and while schools are doing a tremendous job uh, focusing on, on STEM, it still, still lacks a lot. So there's a real shortage that we need to look at a way to resolve that um, for your organizations. In the survey, um, more than 90% of the executives felt that the way to um, bridge that gap was through internal employee training programs and developing the workers that they have to have those skills. So uh, look internally at what you can do to engineer a talent pipe, pipeline. Um, look at tools like CAD Learning that can help you to, to build the skills that your employees need um, from an engineering perspective. And so what are the, some of the strategies that um, you can use? Um, and this is from a report uh, that Accenture put out in terms of strengthening your, your talent supply chain. and um, first and foremost on the list, um, interestingly enough, is taking advantage of, of digital technologies like e-learning. We live in a society that is mobile, um, we're distracted, and we're always looking for things at the moment that we need it. So providing knowledge when and where your users are open to, to getting it makes learning easier, and we find uh, it sticks better as well when the content is searchable, uh, it's non-linear, and it's presented in small units um, for, for your users. And because of that, you'll have a greater chance of improving their skills. Look to your local colleges and universities um, for skilled workers. Internships are a great place to start engaging future workers and identifying those that might fit your work skill, uh, workplace. 
providing them with on-demand um, learning suited to your organization can actually give them a leg up um, on the training needed for a future job. And that goes the same for apprenticeships as well. And additionally, opening up uh, your apprentices to additional uh, careers in your organization that might fit them or that might excite them. We've seen a tremendous amount of success with the Autodesk certification exams. Certification programs like this, whether they're produced by um, your industry or you create them internally, can set a benchmark for the skills that you need for a specific position. We give you the tools in CAD Learning to actually develop those um, certification programs. And lastly, I'd like to just take a quote from the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey. Um, and Jack says, if he sees a passion for a purpose, he knows that any skill can be taught, but passion cannot. So look for employees that have those attributes of passion and intelligence and provide them with the training to, to do the position desired. So let's talk a little bit about CAD learning and what makes us unique. Um, uh, first and, and foremost, uh, we're an Autodesk authorized publisher. Uh, you have trusted advisors for legal aspects, for financial aspects in your organization. Um, we would hope you'd look to someone that uh, has the certification in the Autodesk world or the Autodesk stamp of approval for learning. We're one of only five in the world, four in North America that have this designation, and one of only two e-video tutorial providers that have this designation. All of our training content is done by certified instructors who are industry experts and also have many, many, many years of consulting and training uh, within the industry verticals. We produce our learning content in atomized um, modules, micro lessons, so users can get their answers fast and get back to the job at hand. In the learning world, you'll hear about learning paths. And I say one size doesn't fit all because it really doesn't. Learning paths are, are categories for, for people to be put in, whether it's beginner, intermediate, advanced, or for a specific topic. It doesn't fit the individual. And what we allow you to do is find the gaps for, for skills within your, your workforce and then provide the personalized training based on that individual's skills and knowledge gaps. Uh, from an engineering perspective, for those that are using Autodesk tools, um, and also from your own perspective, your own uh, onboarding content, we're a ter terrific resource for, for onboarding new employees and also providing a means for continuous improvement, whether it's improving skills with a specific application or learning a new application. We're cloud-based, um, so there's no IT overhead for your organization. But what that also means is when we produce new learning modules, they're automatically updated um, within CAD Learning, so you have access to them right away. Our plugin provides true performance support. We say performance support in that it's within the application. It's at the point of need for the user, so they're getting the help they need exactly when they need it. Just to reinforce that, um, this is a, a quote from Rebecca Ashram of WSP Parsons Brinkerhoff. They're one of the largest AEC um, organizations in the world. And they, they look to us to get their users the answers they need, no matter where they are in the world. Um, and additionally, Kathy Brunke from Weyerhaeuser um, uses us, longtime CAD Learning user, and they feel the ability for their designers to access training when it's accessible to them, when they have time for it, is a huge benefit. And also to have a resource to go back to, um, whether they've gone through instructor-led training um, or had somebody come on site, it, it's a tremendous resource to have available to go back to what you just don't remember. 
In terms of depth and breadth of learning content, um, because we focus specifically on Autodesk, we have a very deep and wide um, library. We have more than 40,000 video tutorials in our, our learning library. They're designed to be uh, concise and engage the users. And they cover close to um, now with 2017, 50, 50 titles, uh, 50 Autodesk applications. We address needs from beginner through to advanced, and we allow uh, our, our customers to consume our learning content the way they need it, whether it's I, I just need to refresh on a specific topic, or I need to learn a whole new application from start to finish, or I just, I just need something that provides me with self-help support. From a management perspective, CAD Learning allows you to track progress and improvement um, of your employee skills. It also allows you to share your own training or customized training that you may need to provide to your, your Autodesk users or employees. And also, it, it reduces that internal support you may be providing because CAD Learning can be used as a first line of defense for support purposes. And lastly, of course, going back to those skills and knowledge gaps, it allows you to create individual learning plans for your users. You can't really talk about an organization's benefits without looking at the user, and I can't emphasize enough the, the point of need learning, having something for your users right when they need it. That's when they're going to get the most benefit. But also to have something that's available 24 by 7, no matter where they are or, or when they need it. And of course, keeping up with um, n new interface changes that Autodesk puts out or, or new features, how are your users keeping up with that? We give them a resource to go and look at what's new and use the software to its best benefit. At the end of the day, for you, it all comes down to um, the return on investment. And if there's not a productivity gain, then there's no return. Video um, learning has proven to increase retention rates. Um, and oh, by the way, if, if you didn't remember how to do it, you, you can go back in the video and watch it again. If you're retaining things, then you're going to work smarter and you're going to produce more effectively. You also um, need to look at things like the hidden costs, right? Uh, in, in the architecture and engineering world, when we talk about project delays, it's always, uh, you know, the submittal process slowed things down in a, pro a project. Um, in the manufacturing world, it can work the same way in terms of, of the process slowing things down. But what about when someone doesn't know how to do something or they need help and they can't get it? It's a, a hidden cost that um, is huge. Very, very, very huge. In fact, one of our bigger accounts, who is one of the top 10 AE firms in the world, tells us they save five minutes a day per user, and it translates into millions of days. Uh, I'm sorry, millions of dollars. So let's, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at an example. And we use a very simple example of just 10 designers using Autodesk applications. And let's say maybe I'm one of those people on that team, and I don't know how to do something. So the first thing I'm going to do is not, well, maybe I'll try to figure it out myself, but more likely I'm going to tap Pam on the shoulder and say, hey, hey Pam, um, I'm having trouble using grips in AutoCAD. Can you, can you come over here and help me out a little bit? And Pam's probably going to roll her eyes because this is the third time I've interrupted her work. And she's going to get up, and, and what's happened? 20% of the team is no longer billable, no longer producing. And multiply that by the five, 10 minutes that Pam spends with me, times two, because now there's two of us, and you very quickly are, are losing not only productivity, but a billable time, um, or, or in some cases, overhead time. And the solution really is not just the CAD Learning plugin, but our entire solution. So um, when we finish today, we will provide you with a 30-day trial uh, upon request, and that will give you access to take a deeper look at our content.
try out our assessments and try out the CAD Learning plugin as well. I'd like to turn it over to Pam for a moment and then we'll get on with the presentation. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the offerings that Synergist training has for the Autodesk products. Um, we as well have our experts with real industry knowledge and we do classroom training. We have a schedule that's posted on our website and we also do customized training and our team is very adept at getting our customers up to speed and back to work quickly. We've also been adding and evolving and enhancing our training offerings to make sure that you can get the training you need when, how, and where. And we've partnered with CAD Learning for our on-demand. So you can reach out to us. We can hook you up with an on-demand, either an annual subscription and enterprise subscription. And then we also have access for personalized classes that are virtual or ones that we do have on our schedule, which again is on our website. And then we have online resources. Um, Synergist 60 webcasts casts are done monthly. We have a blog and a YouTube channel. So that will help you straighten out the learning curve. And then you can contact me with any questions. The next slide has my contact information. And I'd like to thank you for attending. And we will hopefully follow up and have a good conversation. Thanks, Pam. You're welcome. OK, I'm going to go ahead and, and shut that down. And let's take a look at, at CAD Learning. So I'm at the main home screen for, for my demo site. In, in terms of your organization, this can be branded for your organization where we have our logo. You could have yours. Um, we do support single sign-on, so if that's important to you, or we also have active directory support, so employees only need to sign in once, and things are maintained in the database as far as new employees that come on and employees that leave. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And when I come into our portal environment, I do have administrative rights here. So the content menu where I'd add custom content, my administration menu and reports wouldn't appear to your everyday user. They'd simply see their name, and this is where they could change their, their user password if they wanted to. In terms of the way content is presented, if I have custom content, it will be the very first thing that I see um, in my course categories. All the course categories are presented in the center of the screen. So you can see it's uh, quite an extensive library, and it aligns very well with the Autodesk Industry Collections. If I want to access a course, I would simply click on the course name. If I see the More icon, it's an indication there's more courses within that tile that I can access as well. At the bottom of the screen, the user has access to their transcript. This is any um, assessments that I've completed or that I may have started. I do a lot of presentations, so I have a lot of assessments here. If I want to look at just my completed assessments, I can, I can get to those, and then if I want to drill down to maybe an individual assessment, I can get to that as well. Administrators also have access to these tr user transcripts. I have my recent activity. Um, this is any video tutorials I've viewed um, in terms of the last five. They'll show up here in my recent activity. And then I also get a high-level view as to how far along I've come in terms of course completion. Most popular lessons is more of an organizational view. What are users within an organization viewing the most? Now, if I um, also have this one area up here called My Content. My Content is um, where playlists can be added or where playlists that are assigned to me show up. So I'm going to go ahead and just start a playlist right now, and then we'll come back to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at a course and see how um, the content structured within a specific course. Every course we produce lets the user know exactly how many lessons are there 
Uh, if they've started, they can see how far along they are in a particular course if they're going in a self-paced scenario and how long that course is. So the AutoCAD course we provide um, is 51 plus hours here. We also include an overall knowledge assessment um, that covers the full breadth of the application. This is features, concepts, and functions within the application, so more what you know um, about the application, whereas the skills assessment also covers the breadth of the application, but it requires you actually drive the software. So you have to open up a file within the application, answer a specific question, um, and do a specific task, excuse me, uh, before you can answer the question. And we'll come back to those in a moment. As far as the way a course is laid out, it's laid out in major topics, and then within each topic are individual video lessons. So as you can see here, I have check marks along my right-hand side, which indicate I've, I've already watched these videos. The courses allow you to filter, so let's say I want to, um, either if I'm a manager, I want to help someone out that's having trouble with Hatch, I can go ahead and, and do a keyword search and filter down to videos related to Hatch, so very quickly I've done that. And maybe I'd like to use the playlist in order to give that user some help. Or maybe I'm doing a lunch and learn and I want um, my my employees to take a look at these videos before they come to the Lunch and Learn, so they're a little bit more prepared. So very quickly I've dropped these videos into a playlist. I can change the order around. I can even go to another CAD learning course and add additional videos from that course. I can then share it with a user. I'm not going to actually invite this user because people get a little annoyed with me when I keep sending them emails, but I can go ahead and add them to my list and then send them the invite. These playlists also create mini assessments. So if you're looking to make sure someone has the skills or you want somebody to review these lessons before maybe they apply the skills to um, a project, you can go ahead and build an assessment um, based on the videos that are in the list. So it does this on the fly for you. And I'll just go through this real quickly, just one question be amazing if I got it right. Um, but what you'll notice is immediately it gives me feedback I didn't get it right and it tells me what video I should watch. I can now create a new playlist just with that video in it so I can focus on what I still need to improve my skills on. Now our actual assessments work the same way. So let's go ahead and take a look at the AutoCAD assessment just so you can see uh, what it looks like and then we'll take a look at a completed assessment. So as you can see, it's telling me I need to open a drawing file. I'm going to just guess at the answer, um, but again, it makes me do something before I can actually answer the question. So we'll go ahead and save this and, and, and exit, and let's take a look at one that's already completed. So this is my Dynamo assessment, and as you can see, I got four out of 10 um, correct, and then with each wrong answer, it's giving me videos that I should go ahead and, and review again. So I can create this new playlist. We'll call this one Dynamo. It builds me my playlist. And again, just like the other playlist I did within AutoCAD, I have the ability to assess myself. So I can go back, review the videos, and then take a new assessment to um, see if either I've retained it all or I need to go ahead and work on the, some, some additional skills. So that um, covers how a course is laid out and assessments. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at an actual video. Um, since videos is our primary mechanism to deliver um, our learning. So let's go ahead and take a look at a video. And in this particular case, it's an AutoCAD video. I do want to point out the scrolling script on the side goes along with the video. I can click anywhere in this video to get to where uh, script to get to where I want to be in the video. 
or vice versa. So if I know I just need a particular piece of this video, I can get to it very quickly. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. My mouse will cooperate with me. There we go. And what I want to point out in the videos is the clarity of them. There's no question as to where the instructor is in a CAD learning video. Um, there are call-outs, there are highlights. I've turned on closed captioning so I can still read along with the instructor um, if I learn best that way by reading and watching. And of course, for those that are hard of hearing. The video itself can be adjusted speed-wise, so I can go up to five times faster than the instructor that may not be showing up to you on the, on the screen down in the far left. Or if I'm a new user, I might want to slow it down. I can slow it down to as much as a quarter of the pace of the instructor. And just like with any modern video play, player, you can rewind the video and play it over again. You can fast forward as well. And there's no limitation as far as how many times you watch the video. Go ahead and close that. And you know what? I think I might want to add this one to my playlist. Oops, wrong playlist. I think I might want to get rid of this. And we'll go ahead and add this one into my playlist too. So anywhere where you see the icon that indicates you can drag the video over, you can drop it into a playlist. So we've looked at the way the assessments work. Um, let's take a look at custom content, because many of you probably have your own learning content that you'd like to deliver out to your employees. Um, and you also may have your own way of doing things um, or different applications outside of AutoCAD application, Autodesk applications that you might want to deliver learning on. So my content tab is where I can create my own courses. Uh, just to show you how simple the interface is, I'll, I'll bring that up. But I am going to go to a course I've already done just to keep us on schedule here. So this is my course I've developed. And in terms of how our customers utilize the custom content, um, they do several different things. They either will develop a, a course from scratch, an internal training course, whether it's um, safety or for onboarding purposes, et cetera. Um, and they use all of their own content. Or they may um, modify our course content to fit their needs. Maybe they don't need everything that we put into uh, 51 hours of, of an AutoCAD course. Or maybe they want to add some of their own specific workflows into um, our, our course content. This is the way we do it. You saw it in the video this way, but this is what we do here. Um, or uh, lastly, um, they may just do a combination of multiple CAD learning courses um, for specific workflows in their environment. Maybe I'm using Inventor with Vault, and I have specific workflows I need to specify uh, for, for my users. Or maybe I'm using Revit and Navisworks and um, BIM Field and BIM Glue. And I need to specify specific workflow for a project team. So in this instance, I've pulled from multiple courses. I have things in here from uh, Revit. I have things in here from AutoCAD. and to show you how I did that, I'll go ahead and open up one of our shorter courses. This is 123D Make. And I'm going to just go ahead and pull a topic over. I could also just select individual lessons, but I'm going to take the whole topic and drag it over. So real quick and real easy, I've dropped that in. I can change the order of how I've set this up so the topics can go in the order I want them to. I can delete any topic at any time. I can also get rid of any lesson. So maybe I don't need every lesson in here. I have a little trash can that allows me to quickly delete it. So that's how you'd add our content. And then you also have the ability, of course, to create your own course content. I've done that here with my course topic. And within my course topic, I can add my own lessons. So I have my add lesson here. I've already added one, so I'll come back to that. 
I can also add documents. We say add dot download, but it's actually adding documents, um, whether it's Word, uh, PDF files, PowerPoint, any type of document you want. And then lastly, you can add links. So I've added a link here to Autodesk University. And we'll do a little personal promotion here. This is actually Matt Murphy, who heads up our content team. He's the poster child for AU. He sits on the Autodesk University Advisory Board as well. So if you're heading out to AU, be sure to check out Matt's class. Now let's take a look at a lesson. This is my lesson that I've developed. Just like a CAD learning lesson, you can upload your own video. I've uploaded a CAD learning video here. And if you have a recording tool that also provides you with um, a script file, you can upload that as well, and it'll be timed to the video just like ours is. If not, we give you the tools to add your own content. Um, so you can write in your own script. It won't be timed with a video, but um, the script will still be there. You have the ability to add resources to your lesson, whether it's an exercise file as, as we do with our videos or it's other documentation. You can add that in there. Um, and you also can associate with a specific um, Autodesk product. Why would you do that? Um, well, let's say you're using the CAD Learning plugin. You can actually surface your video lessons within the plugin um, as part of the solution. So you can surface your custom content. We'll come back to that, but the way you do it is to associate it with both the actual product and the specific command. Lastly, you can also add um, questions to the lesson. So you saw how we created those on-the-fly assessments. Well, uh, this is kind of the secret sauce of how we do it. We link a question right to the video. So from a user perspective, if I go ahead back and I look at my custom course, it looks just like a CAD learning course. I've also created my own assessment to go along with it. If I go ahead and expand all my topics, they're all there. And here's my lesson, which I could launch, as well as the link that I added. Let's go ahead back and just look at the assessment I created very quickly as well. So here I am in my course. I created this assessment to go along with it. The interface, um, just like with a custom course, is, is very simple for creating your assessment as well. I simply gave it a name. I wanted this one to be a knowledge assessment, but I could say it's a skills assessment or it's specific to a topic. I imported questions specifically from uh, these assessments that are available to me based on what I associated my course with. And so I pulled these questions in simply by importing, but I can also add my own questions. So you can create your own assessments based, again, on different things that you might need to get training out in your organization. I'll, I'm going to use just a, a simple example here. How many hours, whoops, helps if I type in the box. How many hours are in the day? And we'll add an answer. And we're going to just have one answer, but I could have multiple answers. And we got a little error there. Go ahead and save it. It did save. And again, if I go back to my course and look at the assessment from the user's perspective, I have all of my questions here. So that um, covers how you can take your own learning content and add it, to, add it to ours and create your own custom delivery program. As far as reporting capabilities, you access reports here. Um, we keep it pretty high level. If I want to look at all activity by user, I simply click here and bring it up. It may take a moment. Um, I don't have every topic um, on that I could access here. Here's our report, but I could add additional um, topics in here as far as the course name, the skill level, etc. I can filter in any way I want. I've done this by user, but if I wanted to filter it down just to what I've done, I could very quickly do that. 
you can export any of our reports out. Um, we also give you access to the raw data feed. Um, so you can in import information into your own reporting tool and manipulate it any way that you need. Administration is where I would add users. We can import your users in for you. Um, if you were to uh, go forward with a CAD Learning Enterprise solution, or you can add users at the individual level as well. Um, so you get a number of fields, and all of these fields are also reportable. If I wanted to look at myself as a user, I could come in as an administrator and take a look at my transcript and just see uh, the various assessments I've taken and drill down on those and see how I'm doing. This comes in particularly handy as someone goes through an assessment, then goes through the recommended training, comes back and takes the assessment again. You can track the improvements um, that the user has. So that covers um, the CAD Learning Center uh, for, your, for your organization. I want to bring up the CAD Learning plugin, and then we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. So let me minimize my screen here. Now, I've just brought up AutoCAD 2017, and the CAD Learning plugin is over here. I haven't logged in as yet. It installs into the add-in menu. So here it is right here. And it works just like any other um, Autodesk palette. So it behaves just like a palette. I can hide it. I can dock it somewhere else. I can um, move it around. Let's go ahead and log in and see how it works. Guess I can spell my name right. So this is a once you log in, you're in. It doesn't require you to log in again. Unless you type your name in wrong. or my password. Could have been one or the other. It's hard keeping all those passwords straight. So this is my palette over here, and this is where lessons would pre be presented to me. And the way the plugin works is based on what I'm doing in the application, it's going to present me with a list of lessons. So let's say I go to the mirror command. It's brought up a list of lessons related to mirror. I still have search here, so if I don't see the lesson I'm looking for, I can search by keyword, and it's going to go look at the CAD Learning um, AutoCAD 2017 course content and pull out any additional lessons. If I move over to the fillet command, again, you'll see my lessons have changed. If I go to Array, they've changed. So it literally adapts to what someone is doing within the application and provides help at the point of need. And that's why we really look at this as a performance support tool, because it's when you need it, you don't have to go anywhere else. Um, you don't have to log into anything else. It's right there for the user. Now, if I want to look at a video, I simply click the video. It's the same learning content we looked at in the CAD Learning Center. The video launches. I can move it to another screen, I can resize it within the application, um, or I can even set it up to launch into a, another browser. So I won't make you wait for that video to come up, um, but very simple and, and very easy, yet very elegant in, in what it does for the user. So with that, I'd, I'd like to go ahead and close it down and open it up for any questions that might um, be waiting for answers. Danielle, I don't see any questions at this time. Um, do you want to give it just a minute or? Well, um, if there's any questions, if you could type them in very quickly very quickly. Otherwise, I'm sure everybody has a lot to get back to today. I don't see any questions coming in, so I would like to thank everyone for joining us.
and I've put Pam's contact information back up on the screen. And I believe we've recorded this, so it's also a resource that can be available to you. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. Thank you all for attending.